to host the ultimate competition, the Eurovision <laughs> Song Contest. And here on Breakfast, uh, we've been taking a closer look. We've been examining the bids of these places, trying to get under their skin. What are their chances? What do they have to offer? Well, over the last couple of weeks, we've already had a flavour of what Glasgow, Newcastle, Birmingham and Leeds could bring to the party. And this morning, ahead of an expected update from the BBC, oh. we can head to Sheffield first, as our entertainment reporter Daniel Rosney has been finding out how people there are hoping to win the bid. Arctic Monkeys, one of the biggest bands from Sheffield, headlined Reading and Leeds Festival last month. And here's where they started. So this is the studio, this is the control room where all the magic happens. So I would have been about 14, 15 years old. The whole buzz around the city was incredible. Yellow Watch was the place to come and rehearse. Once or twice, but it's Jarvis Cocker. A bit mind-blowing when you're that age, seeing the, the chap you see on top of the pops. The city is known for its steel and mining history, and you don't have to dig too deep to find a sense of humour, like which doesn't always translate at Eurovision. There is a sexy secret between us. There are 180 us. million people ah. watching this. Do it yourself at home. You want tango or samba? Samba. Yep. Sheffield-born Graham Fellows character John Shuttleworth had Eurovision dreams in the 90s. Pigeons in flight, I want to see you tonight. But it proved too expensive. If I was to send just the chorus and a cheque for, say, £20, would that be possible? No, we can't accept a cheque for, you know, less than the amount. How would John Shuttleworth react if Sheffield won the bid? He'd jump up and down with glee, but also there'd be a little hint of jealousy if his song, Pigeons in Flight, was not the official UK entry. What's Sheffield's sense of humour like? It's quite uh, self-deprecating. The weather's not great. We're surrounded by all these hills, uh, making us a bit depressed. In a way, Eurovision needs to cool down a bit. It's a little bit too, Wah! you know, and maybe a few... Sheffield people, or just the Sheffield air, will just calm everyone down a bit. If Sheffield is chosen, then this multi-purpose arena will be transformed for one of the most complex TV productions in the world, with weeks of rehearsals to make sure nothing slips up on the night. We've got a fantastic track record of putting on major international events. We're the greenest city in Europe, fantastic people, but also we're welcoming. Hola. Cafe Kalina was set up to offer jobs to Ukrainian refugees escaping the war. It's like a big village, everything. People are so friendly, so kind, and want to help. And like when, like, oh my God, you are from Ukraine. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I say no. It's not your fault, of course. Wherever the contest ends up, it will take over the city for weeks. But what's it actually like to be there? The whole experience was really, it was really wonderful and really fun. Lindsay Dracus was selected to represent the UK in 2001. It's such a production now to what it was in the 2000s. Uh, now there's like lighting on the floor and everything, isn't there, and fireworks and stuff. Um, in my day, they kind of, it was, it was what it was. She's convinced Sheffield would be a great host for the competition next year. It's quite sparse, Sheffield. It's quite big, um, but we can all come together and have a party. The BBC is expected to announce which cities won the bid in the coming weeks. Daniel Rosney, BBC News, Sheffield. You're getting excited. Very. <laughs> <laughs> it's good.